Okay, we're now going to start looking through PowerPoint 4A, excuse me, 4B on solution concentration. So when we're doing stoichiometry problems, we were concerned with grams of reactants forming certain grams of products. And when you're doing stoichiometry, of course, finding the mass of stuff is very important. Because we know in chemistry we can we can count particles by weighing them. Right? If I have for example, if I have one gram of hydrogen atoms, I know I have one mole of hydrogen atoms. So knowing the mass of something in chemistry through our knowledge of the periodic table and the atomic mass, we can, we can count stuff. In this portion of the course, we're going to learn how we can count by looking at volumes of fluids. Uh, sometimes it's much more convenient to dissolve a, a substance in a fluid and then use that fluid in chemical reactions. And when, and when that's done, it's useful to know how much stuff is dissolved in a certain amount of material. So through weighing things, we can count. But also sometimes by, by measuring volume, we can count. And in this portion of the course, we're going to learn about how we can count atoms, do stoichiometric analysis, by, by measuring volume. And the, and the most important thing we're going to need to learn in this chapter is, is, is this idea right here. It's called concentration. I think you already have a fair idea what we mean by concentration. I mean, I know what happens when I leave my tea bag and the tea that I'm making for a very long time. The taste of the tea is stronger or more concentrated. If I only leave it in there a little bit, then the taste of the tea is weak or dilute. And concentration is a way of measuring how strong a solution is. So concentration deals with the amount of a substance divided by its volume. And because we tend to measure amounts in grams or moles, we can use either of those on the numerator. What we want to get used to using in this part of the, of the chapter, we want to use moles on the numerator. And volume, well, we measure that in milliliters. Sometimes we measure that in liters. For this part of the course, we want to try to remember to use liters. So the concentration volume we're going to use most often is the concentration of moles, the amount, per liter, the volume. And this unit right here, moles per liter, is so important, we give it a special name. We use it all the time in chemistry. It's called the molarity. And the molarity is going to be defined as the moles of solute. Remember, the solutes, the stuff that you dissolve into the, into the solvent, and the solvent's usually water. And we're going to divide that by the liters of the whole thing, of the whole solution. It's, and it's, it's very important for you to understand this definition. There's, there's also an abbreviation that's used for molarity. It's given a capital M. And being able to, it's, it's an easy conversion, but it's, it's one that, you forget if you don't use it. When I see this big M, I've got to think moles per liter. So, for example, you have probably seen some bottles of fluid on the shelf in the chemistry lab. That looks something like this. Three with a big M HCl. Or maybe you've seen this. 0.1 molar potassium hydroxide. And that, that tells us, that tells us the concentration in moles of potassium hydroxide per liter of solution what's in the bottle. This would tell me the concentration of the stuff that's in the bottle in units of moles of hydrochloric acid per liter of solution. And this is probably best demonstrated by, by doing a, a simple problem. And I'm going to be doing the problem on uh, PowerPoint.
PowerPoint slide number two of the 4B solution concentration PowerPoint. It says 58.4 grams of sodium chloride, that's just salt, are dissolved in enough water to make one liter of solution. What's the concentration of sodium chloride? Remember, if we put a compound in brackets, it means the concentration of. So this little sentence here is saying the concentration of sodium chloride is what? Let's find that out. And we're going to answer this. I didn't write it here, but we're going to answer this in units of molarity. So I want moles on the numerator and liters on the denominator. Let me write that out. Let's, let's, let's write that out so you have it. What is the concentration of sodium chloride in units of molarity? which is moles of sodium chloride per liters of solution. Okay, let's figure this out. So what I want is moles of sodium chloride for every liter of solution. That's what I want. What I have is grams of sodium chloride from the problem we saw that's in a liter of solution. So I'm going to put my amount on the numerator, 58.4 grams of sodium chloride, and on the denominator I'm going to put the amount of fluid they gave us, they told us in the problem, which is one liter. Well, all I have to do is convert the numerator from grams to moles. And I, I made this easy on myself because the molar mass of sodium chloride is one, excuse me, 58.4 grams in a mole. So I know there's 58.4 grams of sodium chloride and one mole of sodium chloride. And by multiplying by this conversion factor, we see that I've canceled grams of sodium chloride and I've converted my grams of sodium chloride into moles of sodium chloride. And so my units are moles of sodium chloride or liter. I could also write it like this, big M and ACL. That's just, this means the same thing as this. Moles per liter is a big M. And if I do the math, 58.4 divided by 1 divided by 58.4, that's one molar. And that's, that's how we say this abbreviation, one molar sodium chloride. I could also say one mole of sodium chloride per liter of solution. All right, let's go to slide number three. Let's do that problem there. That particular problem says 15 grams of hydrochloric acid is dissolved in enough water one liter of solution. What's the concentration of hydrochloric acid in units of molarity? This is, this is going to be very similar. So I'm going to draw and write 15 grams. This is the amount of HCl per liter of solution. When we're doing concentrations, we always put amount over volume. That's how I've started this. Now I want the concentration in units of molarity, so instead of grams per liter, I want moles per liter. So if you look up the appropriate values on the periodic table for the molar masses of hydrogen and chlorine, you're going to find that there are 
grams of hydrochloric acid and one mole of hydrochloric acid. So by doing this step here, by multiplication by this step, I'm able to convert grams of hydrochloric acid to moles of hydrochloric acid. And now I'm done, because if you look at the units that survive, I have moles per liter, which is molarity, capital M, molar HCl. And all i got to do is the numbers. 15 divided by 36.5, 0 0.41. So I can say that this solution would be a 0.41 molar solution of hydrochloric acid, or I could say there are 0.41 moles of hydrochloric acid per liter of this particular type of solution. Okay, it'd probably be a good idea to do uh, the second problem that's seen on slide number three of our PowerPoint, uh, 4B. Uh, 15 grams of copper 2 nitrate are dissolved in enough water to make 100 mils of solution. And what we want to find out is the concentration of copper, 2, in the resulting solution. And we want to also find the concentration of the nitrate ion in the resulting solution and the units of molarity, or moles per liter. Uh, you'll notice I've done something here for you that you should recognize that I did seamlessly, but you should, you should pay attention to it to make sure you understand. In the problem, it gives you the words copper 2 nitrate. You should recognize that you should be able to go from this name that's given to you in the problem to the formula. And in order to do that, there's some things you need to know. We'll review it really quickly. I need to know copper 2. I know that, right? The, the 2 is telling me what the charge is on the copper ion. I also have my polyatomic ions memorized, so when I see nitrate, I know that's an NO3 minus, but I didn't just leave it like this because I know that the negative charges and the positive charges have to balance out, so I'm going to need two nitrates with a negative one charge to balance the positive two charges on the copper. So I'm going to need two of these, and you'll notice that's what I wrote here. And you're going to get problems like that where you're going to have to rely on information that we've learned from, from past times in the course. Okay. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find the molarity of copper 2 nitrate, the whole compound. So I'm going to find this first. The concentration of copper 2 nitrate in units of molarity. So I have 15 grams of copper 2 nitrate, and that's going to be in 0.1 liters. I hope you see that 100 mils is 0.1 liters. And notice I've started the problem. I want to end up with a concentration, so I've written my information as amount per liter, amount per volume. Well, it looks like I don't have molar units here. And that's, that's what we want this in, units of molarity. So instead of grams per liter, I want moles per liter. So I have to convert the numerator in grams to moles. So I need the molar mass of this. And if I look up the molar masses of all of the appropriate substances, let's see, I've got copper, which is 63.5. Uh, I have two nitrogens. So that's going to be 2 times 14, that's 28. And then I'm going to have, I hope you recognize, 6 oxygens. 2 times 3 is 6. So for oxygen, 6 times 16, that's 96. So let's see, what's the molar mass of copper 2 nitrates? 63.5 plus 28 plus 96, that's 187.5 grams for every mole if we're dealing with 
copper two nitrate. So let's convert grams of copper two nitrate. What's that? 187.5, right? Into moles of copper two nitrate. 15 divided by 0.1 times 1 divided by 187.5. That's 0.8. So I write 0.8 molar, but I want to tell people what's this molar refer to? How many what moles per liter am I dealing with? Well, it's moles of copper 2 nitrate per liter. Now I can answer these two questions. Now that I know the concentration of my copper 2 nitrate. Now in order to answer this next part, we need to have a knowledge of what happens to the copper 2 nitrate when it dissolves in water. We recognize it's an ionic compound, and when ionic compounds dissolve in water, they completely dissociate into the ions that make it up. And this is a part we better zero in on and recognize that when copper 2 nitrate dissociates into its ions, it's going to dissociate into the copper ion, the copper 2 ion, and two nitrate ions. Nitrate, nitrates are polyatomic ion. Each nitrate is going to exist as its own entity, and there's two of them. So I need to write this as two nitrate ions. So because copper exists, the copper cation exists in a one-to-one -one ratio with the compound, the concentration of the copper two and the concentration of the copper, they're going to be the same. So the concentration of my copper two is going to be 0 0.8 molar. In contrast, when the copper two nitrate dissolves, for every unit of the compound that dissolves, I'm going to get two units of nitrate. So I need to take this 0.8 and multiply it by two. So in the solution, the concentration of nitrate ions is going to be 1.6 molar. And that's something that you're going to need to keep in mind for these compounds that when they dissolve in water, dissociate into ions. It won't be that for all substances. The covalent substances that remain as molecules won't do this, but you do need to keep this in mind for the uh, ionic substances.